War Room Sports, www.warroomsports.com. What? Ain't no more to it. This is this is this is big in 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 sports because you know barriers are being broken down and and we're actually kind of proud of the situation. Uh, Tia Norfleet is the first and only African American female uh, professional stock car racer. Um, she is licensed in NASCAR, so we should be seeing her all over the track in 2013. Um, but we have her on the line, so we're going to bring her and her father, Bobby Norfleet, onto the line. Guys, are you there? You are in the war room. Can you hear us? Hi, how you doing? We're pretty how are you? good. How are you doing? How are you? Oh, man, I'm, 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 Great. I'm blushing. I'm so happy to have you in the war room. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I'm happy to be in the war room. <laughs> good, good. And we're happy to have Bobby because he's a Philly boy, and we give all Philly cats a little more love than extra, so you get a little more love by virtue of being his daughter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank Bobby, you. I don't know if you knew we were all from Philadelphia. We just found out that oh. you were a Philly guy. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, so so like okay. like uh, B. Austin just said, man, welcome to the show. We're glad to have you all in the in the war room. And B. Austin, thank do you. you. Thank you very much for having us. Oh mm-hmm. man, it's a it's a pleasure. Let's get get right to it. What uh what was the inspiration behind you guys wanting to pursue a career in in, in NASCAR and stock and racing in general, in motorsports? <laughs> oh, I, is that question is for me or for well, Tia? That, but that, I'll that answer for me. That's directed towards Tia. Okay. And then also, of course, Bobby, you can you can chime in as well. Um, well, of course, my biggest inspiration to want to participate in um, racing is my dad, of course, because um, I was I was raised around it. That's all I've ever seen him do um, all of my life is some form of motorsport. So um, that's my biggest inspiration. But the best part about it is, you know, he he never forced me into it. It wasn't something that he forced me into is something that I, I chose to do and I mean it's it's just been a blessing. So he's my biggest inspiration. Oh wow. That that that's 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 wonderful to hear, especially for those of us who are, who are dads with, with little girls. You know, that <laughs> that that bond between father and daughter is is something special. And and, and Bobby, what what inspired you? Because you have a history behind the wheel and on the track as well. Well, I've been racing uh, all my life. I mean, pretty much uh, 30, 35, 40 years. That's all I've ever done. I don't know any other sport. I don't, you know, I don't uh, really know any other sport. I mean, I know racing. Um, my mentor, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the movie Grease Lightning, Richard Pryor and Pam Greer played in it. Um, uh, well, the gentleman that Richard Pryor portrayed in the movie was was named Wendell Scott from, from Danville, Virginia, you know, our neck of the woods where we're from uh, or where we grew up. And um, his card number was 34, and he was my mentor. And, and he was the first African-American to ever drive in NASCAR. And then when uh, he retired and, and passed away, I got the number 34, and I raced in NASCAR for a long time. And then now um, uh, he is, you know, racing in NASCAR with the number 34. So that's all I, you know, pretty much know. I know, I know racing. Okay. Hello, uh Tia and uh, Bobby, um, my name Hello. is Akil, and a uh, pleasure to have you on the show. And I have a question Thank for you. you. We hear there's a funny story behind this whole driving in NASCAR and stock car uh, career. How old were you the first time you got behind the wheel of an automobile, Tia? Um, an actual automobile or? <laughs> an automobile, the first time. How old were you? Um, the first time I ever had an experience with driving, um, I was about five, um, but it wasn't in a, a actual car. It was in a Barbie Corvette um, Power Wheel, <laughs> um, and my dad, he he took the regular battery out and put two car batteries in it, and I had signal lights and things like that, and so it went two times as fast that it would um, normally go. But the first time I was in an automobile, I was about, I was about seven or eight. Wow. Okay. And my dad was 
drive the van, <laughs> um, the family van home if I would win my karate match. So. <laughs> wow. So you, you fought a little harder that day, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you were giving it your all in karate. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was putting it off because <laughs> I wanted to drive. So, so Tia, you're breaking down some huge barriers in American sports by being the first black woman to participate in a sport almost exclusively dominated by Caucasian males. Does your pioneer status put any added pressure on you when you get out uh, get out there on that track? Um, with me, the entire pressure thing, um, I don't really dwell on that too much because I'm the type of person, my way of thinking, I, I put it in the hands of the Lord. You know, I, I, I pray and I, I give it to him, and I know that what he has for me, it is for me, and um. So that's just how I go about my life and everything Amen. that I do. I heard that. I heard that. Okay. Uh, I have a question that's for both of you. This is Jimmy, by the way, and I'm, I'm glad to have you both on our show. Um, Thank you. So this question is for Bobby as well as Tia. Uh, speaking of, like, added pressure, do you think that the expectations of you in the sport are higher because you are, in fact, the daughter of Bobby Northley, and he said, you know, this is the only sport he knows, so – I'm pretty sure he knows a lot of people within this industry. So does that put any added pressure on you? On me? Yeah, yeah. Do you think it adds any pressure? I, Bobby, you can add it as well. Do you think gonna, that has any pressure? Or expectations. I mean, people are going to expect, I mean, they're going to have their own expectations. I mean, you can't control that. I I mean, I just basically, I, I change the things that I can, and the things that I can't, I, I don't worry about them. But I know well, that I, I I do what I I love to do, and I and I go hard at it, and I put all I have into it. And I mean, I, I just want to do what I love to do. Um, I can't change anyone's opinions or anyone's thoughts. Um, that's their own thing. So uh, yeah. I just I just do what I love to do, and I go hard at it, and I put in hard work because I know that if I don't put anything into it, I'm not gonna get anything out of it. So I just take it one day at a time. Yeah, I respect well, that, Bobby. How do you feel about that, Bobby? Well, I mean, we're, I mean, and going into it, I mean, she's seen the trials and tribulations that I've had in the sport. And, uh, and you know, I have taught her over the years uh, to, you know, what to do and how to do it and how to react to it and uh, how to be competitive in these cars. And uh, I just tell her, I use her old saying, she's, you know, the young girl teaches the old man something. She says she stays prayed up. You know, we stay prayed up over here. And I, when she gets in the car, I just tell her, you know, you do you, and don't worry about the rest. Uh, you've got some of the best equipment, and you just do you. You know what I mean? And, um, and you know, I, I don't really – I think she puts more pressure on herself than anybody puts on her. You know what I mean? We don't um, – you know, we just let her uh, do what she does best. As long as she gives it all her all, that's all I expect. I mean, when she gets on the track – I go stand up on the wall. I don't say anything. I don't even, when they're working on the car, or when they're putting her in the car and strapping her in and everything, I walk away because, uh, you, know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a father. I take my, my race car owner's hat off, and I put my father's hat on, and now it's, I'm looking at it from a different prison. Right. Yeah, and let me ask you a question, Bobby. Bobby, uh, how nerve-wracking is it to watch her race, though? Because you know how you hear uh, other athletes' parents say it's just nerve-wracking. Because you were in the race car uh, game, how, ner- how nerve-wracking is it watching your daughter race? Well, it's very nerve-wracking. I mean, it's very it's something, you know, uh, You, I say in the back of my mind, she's going to do it with or without me. So I'd rather uh, teach her the right way to do it and give her the right safety equipment and as long as I know she's out there doing what she wants to do and she's got the best equipment and the best crew and um, she's trained right, uh, I think she can be as successful as anybody out there, giving all things being equal. So, I mean, as a parent, I mean, don't, you, know, I, you know, her mom is the one that really shows the emotion and, and really gets real nervous. I mean, I, you know, I know she can do it, so I don't really worry about it um, as much as I have or used to. And okay, again, gotcha. if the playing fields are equal, um, and I mean, if the playing field is equal, we can compete with the best of them, you know. So we just really just love to do what we love to do, and I mean, this is a very exclusive sport, but you know, 
we take it one day at a time and and I just love to do it. I don't I mean and I'm actually blessed that I have the opportunity to do something that I love to do because a lot right. of people are stuck in a job that they hate. So I look at it as a blessing. Yeah, we we know about that. That's why you know we do what we do now because, you know, like you said, we love to do this. And um, this is Devin again, Tia. Uh, speaking of playing field, um, Danica Patrick she takes a lot of criticism for being able to generate so much revenue without actually experiencing much uh, success. Um, does her situ? Do you take any motivation out of her situation? Um, you know, do you think about that and? And, and it just makes you want to work that much harder to be recognized as more than just the female on the track. Um, my hat, my hat goes off to them, you know, because again, she's in a she's in the same sport that I'm in, and and she's a female, and there's always, you know, um, being in that type of arena is always added pressures and and certain things. But um, like my dad said, I, I focus on me. You know, I focus on what I'm trying to do, and I know as long as I'm doing the right thing, I don't have to, I don't have to be extra to get limelight or or things like that. As long as I'm doing the right thing and doing what I feel is right, um, I'll, I'll make it. I'll, I'll be successful because I know that I, I've done it the right way. Yeah, and this is Bobby. Um, this sport is is completely different than most of the professional sports um, in, you know, in, you know, in America. Uh, it's a very, very revenue-generating sport, very, very revenue. And it's not all about winning. Um, Dale Jr. is the most popular uh, driver. His revenue stream is larger than anybody's in the sport, and he's only won one race in the last almost five years. Um, so, I mean, you know, it's a very, very – you know, it's a sport of who can be, who can draw the most positive exposure to their sponsor. Don't get me wrong, uh, we we're in the sport to be competitive. Uh, we intend to win. We did. We don't come uh, to be second place. We come to win. And I again, I think Tia, uh, when you see her drive, you'll see she has that competitive spirit. She has, uh, let's get up on the wheel and let's get it done. Um, right. And and uh, and that's what it takes. It takes part of that, but it also takes. Uh, again, it takes good marketing people, revenue-generating uh, situations. The average NASCAR team, just FYI so your listeners will understand, the average NASCAR team net-net at the end of the year more money than any baseball team except the New York Yankees. Wow. 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 That, that's something to think about. Yeah, we were actually, you know, digging more into the business of NASCAR, you know, once we realized that Tia was going to come on the show. And, and we, you know, we did learn a lot of things. Uh, one of the things that we okay. learned is that, uh, like, the two biggest events in NASCAR, I believe it's, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Daytona and Tal- Talladega? Daytona and Talladega are, Daytona is our Super Bowl, okay? Right. That's our Super Bowl. Uh, one Daytona, as far as attendant-wise, not viewership, but attendant-wise, is bigger than eight Super Bowls. And, and that's Man. the point I was about to make. I heard that, you know, one of those events bigger than the championship and all the other major sports put together. Yes, combined. That, we know, had this year amazing. Uh, and this year we had 1.1 million foot traffic. Wow. <laughs> Sheesh. Now that, is, that yeah that that is that is amazing and and the revenue that's driven by NASCAR. Oh, is awesome. I, I mean it's just it's just awesome. I mean we talk about. I'll just give you another prime example. Uh, a few months ago, uh, several months ago, when Michael, when Vic signed his big contract, I think it was sixty million five years, sixty million four, some, something, one hundred million. I'm sorry, a hundred million, uh, and I think forty million of a guaranteed, it was something right. of that nature. Um, the same week, Dale Jr. signed his contract with his owner, two hundred and fifty million five years, all of it guaranteed. Wow, one hundred percent guaranteed. Man. Right. Danica the same way. Danica the same yeah. way. Danica signed with Dale Jr. and her con- she has huge contracts. I mean, this is a sport that's a family wow. sport. It's a good sport. And NASCAR is making an assertive effort to diversify. Uh, they, sure. I mean, they have. In the last sure. few years, they I've seen to. leaps and bounds of them making assertive efforts to do this. And uh, Kia fits right within that generation 
that they're looking for, that 18 to 34 year old uh, market. And that's what, um, and, and, you know, again, she can drive. That's, you know, that's the most important thing, you know, being, she's only five feet tall. Okay. Uh, and, but she can drive the car, you know, she can, you know, she can drive the car. I wouldn't, as a parent, I wouldn't put her in the car if I didn't think she could drive the car. Hey, Bobby, uh, one of our listeners in our chat room, after hearing you talk about the numbers, says they're currently taking the football out of their son's hands and giving him a steering wheel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Tia, rumor, rumor yeah. has it that your talent isn't limited to the track. We hear that you, uh, you're a very good singer as well. What kind of music do you enjoy singing? And do you have any plans to pursue a singing career in the future in tandem with driving? Um, as far as the music that I like, um, I, I believe that there's only two kind of music, good music and bad music. Um, I'm very diverse. <laughs> I'm a very diverse individual anyway, but um, as far as music, um, I like all kind of music. But, of course, I was raised in the church, so gospel is, is my root. Um, but I love all kind of music. But as of right now, as far as the music career, I – I um I play with it on my downtime, but I'm more focused right now on my racing. Right. Oh, okay, okay. Tia, uh, we know that giving back to the community is a big deal for you. Uh, you do a lot of charitable work, but one that stands out to us is your literacy program, Driven to Read. Explain to our listeners the program and your inspiration behind creating it. Well, the program is, um, it promotes literacy, not only to kids, but um, also adults, because there's also adults that are illiterate. And um, I believe that everybody should should be able to read. I mean, it's something that, I mean, is it needs to happen. And so I just, basically, um, another partner of ours that we know, um, me and my dad, He, we all came up with it, and as far as the kids part of it, it's like a, it's like a, um, a, we also have a comic book as well, where it promotes reading and, and learning, and with the comic book, it, it's like um, a comparison to Dora, and you right. the characters, and they drive in the pit stop, and every time they get in the pit stop, they learn something. It's, it's a lesson to be learned. So I think that education is key, and not only in kids but also adults. Everybody should have the right to have education, and so that's really the inspiration behind it. Okay. Hey, I have a, a question, actually, uh, from our text inbox. And, Bobby, you can touch on this a little bit because it was along the lines of what you were just speaking on a few minutes ago about the business side of NASCAR. Um, the the texter asked, is it hard to get sponsors being a black woman in motorsport? And if so, um, you know, do you find that it forces Tia to be a better driver in order to protect her investment, you know, especially since T's so young in the sport right now? Well, uh, it's hard with this economic turndown uh, for anybody to get a sponsor. It's, it's very hard. Um, but, uh, no, the uniqueness – of who she is in the sport, uh, it gives her a little bit better chance with a sponsor because what a sponsor looks for, it's not a monetary return. They look for an ROI based on advertisement. Uh, this sport actually, on the average, where if you buy a newspaper, it gives you what's called a one-to-one return on investment. Um, uh, the Our marketing group has come back and told us that Tia will give somewhere around a 40 to 1, 38 to 40 to 1 return on investment. Uh, As far as uh, media, uh, she'll give every dollar you spend uh, as a sponsor, you'll get $40 back in advertising. That's a that's a good deal on any day, you know. So it's it's, you know, but you know, you you know, you have drivers like Dale Jr. who does the same thing. Danica has about a 38 to 40. Dale Jr. has about a 38 to 40 uh, return investment. So. I mean, I'll give you a prime example. Amp Energy Drink spends, I, I don't know, eight, um, eight, uh, about $18 million a year with Dale Jr. And, and last year uh, they sold about $400 million worth of Dale Jr.-related uh, merchandise. And the director of, result of, 
of Dale Jr. So it was a good, you know, it was a good thing for them. All right. Wow, that, that, those numbers are amazing. Uh, this is Jimmy again. Tia, your entire story is sort of an against all odds type of story. So my question is, what advice would you give to any uh, young lady or any young person in general about pursuing their dreams if they think it's not possible to achieve? Um, I would say as long as you put God first, anything is possible. Um, and to go for it, never be afraid to be you because um, there's only one you in this world. And never listen to what negative people have to say and surround yourself by positive people because that's your support team and you're going to always need it because there's going to be times when you want to give up, but as long as you have positive people around you that see the same vision that you do, it, it'll always be a better day. But I would I would advise them to just stay strong because you're going to have to be strong, but never be afraid to think outside the box. It's to always Go for what your heart desires. If you if you believe that this is something that you want to do and it's positive, I mean, I would say go for it, one hundred percent. Okay, okay. Uh, Tia, what can what can we expect in the future from Tia Norfleet and Bobby Norfleet Racing? Um, right uh-huh. now we're <laughs> we're we're planning to um, maybe run a couple of races um, this year before the year is out, but we're definitely planning um, in a full season next year. Um, and we're just out here want, taking it one day at a time I and mean, just doing everything that we can to to make it and just having fun. So, I mean, definitely look for me on the track because that's definitely what we're doing. Okay. And this is Bobby. This is Bobby. Uh, I, I've always taught to you uh, not only – uh, I spent just as much time teaching Tia of the business end of this business as much as driving. Uh, Tia is the co-owner. She's the co-owner of Bobby Northley Racing. So I teach her the business side of the business, and I teach other kids and other people the business side of this business because, I mean, you see us on Sunday racing, on Saturday racing, but uh, this is an everyday job for us. So, I mean, in 2013, again, uh, we expect Tia to run a full season. Um, we expect to see Tia in a lot of commercials. Uh, expect to see her with, a, you know, doing a lot of things, but also doing a lot of charitable uh, giving back uh, things also because that's what we believe in over here. Okay. That is, that's good stuff. All right, before, before you, we get you guys off the line, uh, this, is, this is the portion where we give our guests a chance to basically – uh, as B. Austin has termed it, to give you a commercial. Tia, tell everybody what they need to do to find you and everything you're doing, your Twitter, your Facebook, websites, any important dates, events, programs, whatever you want to promote, this is the time. Okay. Um, Facebook, Tia Northfleet. Uh, Twitter, Tia Northfleet. Um, you can go to TiaNorthfleet34.com. You can also um, find me on Instagram, Tia underscore 34. Um, what else? <laughs> it's so many social media. <laughs> well, just whenever anything comes up, when a race comes up, you just let us know, and we'll get it out on social media because, you know, we have tons of followers, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere you look. We have a presence there, so when anything happens with Tia Norfleet and Bobby Norfleet Racing, just let War Room know, and, and we'll help you guys promote it. You, uh, you guys are friends. Okay. You guys are friends of the show now, so we'll definitely have you on uh, before and during the 2013 Nationwide Series season. This is this is be awesome. I had a question: Who wins in the car, Bobby or Tia? <laughs> <laughs> Who wins in the car? I think the old man still got it. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, I got it, you know. Come uh, on, what you, you say know. to that? Can't let that slide, man. You in the car now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll give him his run for, for his money for sure. <laughs> yeah, all the you know, our family friction here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think, old man, I think, yeah, we're asking also too uh, to follow. Uh, Tia, like, uh, look at Tia's Facebook and uh, like her Facebook page. Okay, yeah, we'll we'll get all of that because we have the information as well. So we'll put all of that out on our Facebook and, and Twitter pages as well. 
uh, get you some more followers, some more people to talk to on social media. But, uh, Tia, this has been uh, great. We're glad that you came. Bobby, we're glad that you came with her. We gave our, our listeners kind of a, a double treat that they weren't expecting because a lot of people were anticipating your appearance. So, uh, you know, we, we should get a lot of traffic and a lot of buzz afterwards. I'm sure we'll get a lot of questions. But uh, it was great having you guys on, and like B. Austin said, you are always welcome back in the war room anytime you feel like it. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Okay. That's it. Talk to you later. All right. All right. Uh, Kuwait is the war room with five nights at the round table, five Philly 